Hi, and welcome to this Roll-On Tech Talk. I'm Jake, an applications engineer at Roll-On. Today we'll be discussing axial and radial loads on bearings, how they affect different kinds of linear guides, and how to consider axial and radial loads to select the best linear guide for your application. All loads experienced by a bearing can be expressed as a combination of axial and radial loads. Axial loading is caused by forces applied parallel to the rotational axis of a bearing. It's also known as thrust loading. In the case of this roller bearing assembly, an axial load is created by forces acting parallel to the threaded stud acting as the bearing's axle. Radial loading is caused by forces applied around the radius of the bearing's axis. In the case of this roller bearing assembly, a radial load is created by forces acting into the outer surface of the roller. Track roller linear guides, such as this this roll-on compact rail and tele-raised telescopic slides have roller bearings mounted on the bottom face of the slider. So for these guides, axial loading is caused by forces acting into the face of the slider and radial loading is caused by forces acting into the sides of the slider. The roller bearings used in these guides have a single row of balls that run along the circumference of the bearing. As a result, they have much greater radial load capacity than axial load capacity. This means that load capacities for these guides will be greater when the rails are side mounted with respect to the load and lower when flat mounted. Some track roller floating guide rails, like this compact rail U-rail, only constrain the bearings radially and allow for axial freedom of movement. This provides compensation for axial misalignment between the rails, but does not provide axial load capacity because the slider is free to float inside the raceway. For applications where guides need to be flat mounted, Roll-On Compact Rail Plus features roller bearings that use two rows of balls along the circumference of the bearing instead of one, greatly increasing the axial load capacity. Radial and axial loading on these open ball cage guides is very similar to roller bearing guides. Axial loads are created by forces on the face of the slider and radial loads are created by forces on the sides. These guides also achieve greater load capacity when side mounted with respect to the load instead of flat mounted. Some styles of ball bearing cage guides cannot support any significant axial loads without binding or excess deflection. So when considering one of these guides for an application where axial loading will be present, ensure that the guide can support it. This roll-on monorail is a recirculating ball profile rail linear guide, and axial and radial loading applies a bit differently. Due to the orientation of the recirculating ball tracks inside the carriage, load will be evenly distributed on the four raceways, regardless of whether force is applied on the top or the side of the slider. As a result, the radial and axial loads are equal, and these guides have equal load ratings in any mounting configuration. In general, the radial and axial load capacities of linear guides should not be exceeded. When calculating the expected lifetime of a linear guide, it's also important to consider any shock, vibration, and rapid acceleration that the guide will experience, and assign safety factors to account for those increased loads. Having two pieces of information relating to axial and radial load can ensure an optimal assembly. For assistance with selecting and sizing the best linear guide for your application, or for more information on any of these guides, reach out to a roll-on engineer at rollon.com. Thanks for watching.